<gasps> oh my. <laughs> His toop! It's gone! Excuse my language. Hello, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright. In the last episode, we started a case where a woman was murdered and Phoenix's best friend was accused. So we're kind of in the middle of this case right now. It's pretty cray. So let's just get started. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about that misunderstanding. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. Which I do, actually. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. Hold it. You said heard, not saw. Yes, heard. All I saw was the body lying there. I didn't think to look at anything else, least of all my watch. Hmm, isn't that a little strange? So you're saying you heard something. But if you were so shocked by the body, you wouldn't hear anything at all. The witness did say he actually heard the time. It's ludicrous to suggest he wouldn't hear anything. You're ludicrous. I have to agree with the prosecution. Eh, story of my life. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Are you sure it was a television and not a radio? Well, no, I guess it might have been a radio. Incidentally, there was no radio on the premises. There was only one large television. Right. I can't put my finger on it, but something about this seems fishy. Something about hearing the television. Who in this has testified he heard the time? I already know what it is, but I'm going to press through it so you guys can see. Uh, I actually remember this case, kind of, probably more than the other ones. Um, because it was like the first one. But, and it's the easiest one out of all of them. But, anyway. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? How do you explain the gap? Well, witness, can you explain this? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. Okay, whatever. A video? Yes, that would explain why the time was wrong. True, true. Right. I think the problem lies someplace else. We're agreed that you heard the time at the scene, then. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Uh, oh, sorry, I skipped that. <laughs> yes, I can practically hear it now. It was quite clear. Mr. Payne, has the prosecution verified this testimony? My apologies, Your Honor. I, too, have only just learned that the witness heard the time. Oh, I'm really sorry. I only remembered it just now. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Okay. Notice anything suspicious? I do, actually. Um, okay. So, what you have to do is, like, think about the different things that he's saying and where, like, something he says is not going to make sense with evidence that you have. So, in this case, um, let's see. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Now, if you remember, there was a blackout. So there's no way that that could actually be true. Because there was a blackout during that time. So you present that, and then it's like, oh, snap. Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. <laughs> you couldn't have heard a television or a video. Well, uh... The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sowit? No, I, I find it quite puzzling myself, quite. Ah! <laughs> Wait, I remember now. Mr. Sowit, the court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. Yes, but you will never get one of those in this game. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That and you seem rather distraught. 
It looks like he has to pee. Ah! My apologies, Your Honor. It, uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sowit. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. And don't fuck it up this time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yes, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. Except, like, why would you say you heard a clock when you saw it? <sighs> Alright, time to cross-examine this bitch. Ah, oh, the music in this game is so good. In all of them, actually. I don't know if Capcom's gonna be, like, on my ass about that uh, for copyright. I'm not sure. We'll see. Okay. I didn't hear, hear the time I saw it. That strikes me as a very suspicious mistake. Yes, I can see how you'd be a little doubtful. I'm really sorry. I only just remembered that table clock. A table clock? There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? A table clock? Was there a table- was there a clock at the scene? This is the first I've heard of it. Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. The murder weapon? Yes, the table clock that was used as a weapon. That's what I just said. Did you doze off in the middle of my testimony or something? Shut up. Something's fishy here. There's a lot fishy here. That must have been what I saw. Why didn't you tell us that in the first place? I guess it just slipped my mind. I'm not really sure how it happened myself. Who in it says he saw the table clock? End of story. Now find the contradiction. There he did. Alright. Um, okay. So, blah 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 blah. The murder weapon. Alright. Now, if you remember, the murder weapon was the statue. It was not a clock. Um, a statue in the shape of the thinker. It's rather heavy. And, yeah. So this was the murder weapon, so. Objection! Objection. Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was a statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? <laughs> oh, this is like my favorite music in this game. You with your objections and your evidence. Just who do you think you are? I'm Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, bitch. Just answer the question, Mr. Sowit. Hey, I, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne. Has a witness stated the statue is indeed a clock? The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. That is like the most weird clock I've ever heard. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. <laughs> Do you have any problems with his testimony now? Hmm. Um. Let me see. Um. Loss of blood due to blunt trauma. The thinker, it's. It is heavy. I don't know if. Hmm. I don't. I guess not. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. There was a clock on the scene, so no problem. Oh, okay. I'm wrong. Sorry. Right, are you out of your mind? The clock doesn't look like a clock at all. The witness couldn't have possibly known it was a clock just by seeing it. Oh, yeah. Okay. He said himself he never entered the apartment, it was in his testimony. Hey, you're right. I forgot that. Is something the matter? Does the defense have anything to add? Yes, yes, I do, actually. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Sometimes you have to think out of the box in these games. Um, actually, that happens a lot. <laughs> like, in some of uh, the more complicated cases, you're like, what? So, hopefully, it won't take me too long in some of them, because... 
I've definitely um, had to look up walkthroughs before for like a certain section like where I was just missing one little thing. But anyway, clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the apartment. Yeah, he didn't know the victim. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah, prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you the one who killed her. <gasps> oh snap. You struck her with the clock and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Bridge. Oh, what are in the court? Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sawit, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Shut up, Payne. Oh, what's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. No, it's not. Baseless. Just look at the witness's face. <laughs> like he's a monster, huh? Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, I, that day, I, I never, look, I, the clock, I heard, I, uh, uh. Oh, oh my. <laughs> His toop, it's gone. Shut up, shut up, shut up, I hate you. It was him, I tell you, I saw him. He killed her and he should burn, burn, give him death. Good lord. Calm down, toupee man. Order, order in the court, I say. Your Honor, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Oh, I said that the freaking witness just threw his toupee in my face. Mr. Wright. Your Honor. You claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I'd better think through it carefully. Yes, Your Honor. The sound Mr. Sawit heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Try sounding the clock. <laughs> Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. Beep. <laughs> the clock said I think it's 825. That's certainly a strange way to announce the time. You're telling me, dude. Well, he is the thinker, after all. <laughs> <laughs> so we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. Ah. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sawit, try to talk your way out of this one. <laughs> you forgot one thing. Oh, what's he talking about? Well, it may seem like this clock is running three hours slow. It proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. Shit. He's right. I'm gonna prove that. Damn it. <laughs> Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately. Damn it. This ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sawit. I came all the way down here to testify and look what happens. They treat me like a criminal. A criminal. You lawyers are all slime. Ugh, I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Sawit. Mia, I mean, Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and... Think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason, and you'll have your proof. Right? Right? Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Yes, I can. Wait! Maybe I can prove it. 
You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There's a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Tough words, let's see you pull this one off. <sighs> let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. Oh boy. Okay, so this is one of those situations in which you have to think outside the box. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. Yeah, I definitely knew that. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sawit, or should I say, Mr. Did It? Oh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, he was just foaming at the mouth. Order! Order, I say! I got Southern there for a minute. Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your client? He, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Oh, that was fast. Very well. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. <laughs> as I, like, as I do his voice more and more, he just starts sounding like Iago from Aladdin. Does anybody else get that? Because I do. And find the true culprit at the same time. Well, it's a long career of doing that. Let me tell you, it just gets worse from here. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Botts. Not guilty. And this is what happens in real court, let me tell you. Confetti drops on you. Definitely what happens. And with that, the court is adjourned. It turns out that Frank Sawit was a common burglar. Ham burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day... When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Saw would let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Saw would grab the nearest blunt object he could find. Catch up. August 3rd, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Whew, I still can't believe we won. Right, good job in there. Congratulations. Uh, thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she is this glad, I imagine how Larry must feel. <laughs> My life is over! Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no. I mean, bad, 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 bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But, but my Cindy Whitney's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was uh, a hooker. Nah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. <laughs> Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Bot's innocent. <laughs> Harry Bot's innocent. <laughs> oh, thanks. I really owe you one. Okay, now he's starting to sound like Harley Quinn a little bit. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner, movie, my treat. Oh, no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook, man. Where's my free dinner? Oh, hey. Here, take this. It's a present. A present for me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. 
Really? You? You made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick! Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And and she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you just want to cry? Ah! Larry. Are you so sure? Excuse me? <laughs> I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Now nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me, it's okay. Oh, I'm not sympathizing, really. Isn't that right? Right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Huh? Me? Oh, right. Yeah. Mm. What the heck is she talking about? Okay, so we show him the statue because the fact that she kept it proves that she must have cared about him a little bit. Either that or she just really liked the freaking clock. Check this out, Larry. Proof positive. You weren't just some chump to her. Huh? Where'd you get that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. She took it with her when she traveled. Oh, she probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am, thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. Right. I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. <laughs> this just became an after-school special. Right. Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, she's gonna die. <laughs> Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. <laughs> yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him? Uh, yeah, part at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? Wink, wink, wink. And so my first trial came to a close, and my boss hit on me. It was a great day. Larry slapped me on the butt and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay me. Unless you count the clock he gave me a... Which I don't. I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry... Would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. Oh, fucking snap. And that is the end of this first trial. So this one was really short because it's kind of like the tutorial trial. So the next ones are going to be a good bit longer and there's more involved with them. So definitely let me know how you guys are liking this series. I hope you're enjoying it. I'm having a lot of fun playing through this game again. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.